skibbity bubbity boop up. What's going on guys? This is a bit wise guy. Welcome to episode number four of the Office JS series, uh, where I take you into a deep dive of the Office JS API, building Office JS apps and you know, all of that wizardry. Um, in this episode, we are going to be looking at the context API, how it works and what it does and uh, why it's probably the most important uh, interface within the Office JS uh, world to understand. So without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so I think it's worth diving straight into the Office JS documentation at this point. Um, so the Office context represents the runtime environment of uh, the add-in and provides access to key objects of the API. So what does that actually mean? So when you are running a uh, Office application, whether that's a Microsoft Word document, uh, sorry, a Microsoft Word, you know, or Microsoft PowerPoint. Uh, or maybe that's Excel or whatever it is, right? What are any of these hosts uh, which are listed here? Uh, each of them has a context and a current context. So essentially what that means is that uh, when the application is running, there are certain properties that are uh, available to you as a developer, uh, which you can use within your application. So an ex a very clear example of what that might be would be the document itself. So if you're working in a Microsoft Word uh, document, the, the document itself, right, the, the surface in which people write text and put images and whatever else, uh, that is part of the context and it is manipulated through the context. The reason that these contexts exist is because, the very, because of the very nature of the uh, Office uh, applications. So the reason the context actually needs to exist is that uh, things are happening in real time on both sides of the equation. You've got your Office uh, application and you've also got your Office JS add-in, right? And the document might be updating or whatever else and, uh, you know, you might want to update the document. So there needed to be an interface between the two. So you can, you can essentially think of it as a interface between your Office JS add-in and the host application. <clears throat> so Scrolling down here, let's have a look at a few of these that are available. Um, and we're gonna skip over the least, the least important ones for now, and we'll come back to those a little bit later. Uh, so the first one that I want you to take notice of here is this document. Essentially, uh, this document object here gives you access to the current document that is available within the context. Now that is a fairly generic uh, object. Um, and there are more specific ways of accessing certain documents in certain hosts, but essentially that will provide you the document within the current context. Uh, the next one is that the, the host uh, object within the context. So this actually tells you where your Office JS add-in is running. The mailbox context is very specific to uh, Microsoft Outlook projects. For now, we're not gonna cover it, but in later videos when we start doing development within Outlook, uh, we will actually come back and cover the mailbox context. But the mailbox context for, as an example, is actually quite a good one. So when you're in your mailbox, right, and you start choosing different emails, the context actually changes because the currently available article updates, right? So, uh, so, so for example, what is an article, right? So an article is essentially a piece of mail that is in your mailbox that is currently being viewed in the view panel or in some kind of view panel. That then becomes accessible to the context, or I should say, promoted into the context. And it is then, a, from, from that point on, it is then available uh, to your Office JS add-in. So scrolling down a little bit more, we've got some uh, examples of this kind of stuff, and uh, we've got things like localization examples and whatnot, but I wanna actually take you into some code, and we're gonna show you how using the context within Microsoft Word actually works. So stick around for that. All right, so heading back into our code base, um, let's go ahead and scroll down here. So I've kind of pre-prepared just a little bit of UI um, because we are using the Fabric UI and I don't remember every single prop off by heart. Um, but let's just quickly transition in and we can have a look what our UI looks like and then uh, we'll dive into some actual React code. Diving into here, we can see that we have our uh, React.js application. Um, all it's got is a button. I've removed all the other stuff. We just don't need it at the moment and it kind of creates a little bit of confusion. Um, so essentially we've got this click me to fetch data. At the moment it does absolutely nothing. 
Um, but what we essentially want it to do is we want it to fetch data from an API and we want, it to, we want it to insert that data into our current context. In this case, it's a document, right? So we want to write to this document. We want to write some text into this document. So how, how might we go about doing that? So let's dive into our code base. Okay, so the first thing that I told you already is that I've already created a button and you've already seen it. Um, I'm not gonna go through the Fabric UI itself. It's a very large framework and I would recommend uh, looking, I may do it in separate series on the Fabric UI, but this isn't that series. Okay, so as I mentioned before, we wanna click this button, fetch some data and put it into the thing. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a separate file uh, that's going to create our function that actually, you know, uh, consumes the data from the API. Um, so you might notice up here, I've already got an example API ready to go, so I don't have to go searching for one. Um, so I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call this one. I'm just going to call this function fetch data .ts. All right. And I'm going to say const fetch data. Uh, it's going to be equal to an asynchronous arrow function. Uh, we are going to be using the fetch API, so I'm going to say const data is equal to await. And I'm just going to grab this, and you guys can use whatever sample API you want, um, or you can use this one, that's totally fine. Um, this one was just like super nice to work with, that's why I pretty much chose it. Um, and I'm going to close the side panel so you guys can see everything. Uh, Alright, so... Um, after we fetch the data, uh, we're going to want to return the JSON object from that data, so .json. Um, and since we are using TypeScript, we should probably return a promise, and I'm going to be super bad and return any rather than a type. Um, and, oops, got to spell that correctly. So return a promise from there since we are using uh, an async await, um, and the JSON method itself is also... Uh, promisified, so we should be returning the correct data type up here. Although the template for that is not correct. Um, all right, so let's dive back into our actual app code here. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is uh, go up to this click event handler. All right, so, all right, so we need to actually get access to the word uh, context. As I mentioned before, the context provides us with th access to things like the document um, and properties about the host application itself. So in the case of Microsoft Word, to get access to the context, we write word.run. Uh, and in this, we want an asynchronous, we want async, we want to use an asynchronous function because we're going to be using asynchronous code inside of our function. So we'll say async context, uh, which is an arrow function. Uh, and now we have access to the context itself. So as you can see here, we actually have access to many different things. Now the context for Word is specific to Word itself. Uh, not a lot of these properties are uh, available on other contexts within other host applications. It's one of the reasons that uh, Word uses this word.run to provide its own specific context. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna actually need to do is get access to our data. So we'll say const uh, my data is equal to, and you should never name your variables my data. I'm just getting a little bit lazy, a little bit rushed here. We'll say fetch data which will get auto-imported for me at the top of my file, hopefully. Then we're gonna say context.document, because remember, we want access to the currently loaded document within the context, dot body. So the body is the actual um, document itself. And then we're gonna use the, uh, we're gonna use the function insert paragraph. So essentially, that's just going to insert, um, you know, a paragraph of text at a specific location, which we're going to define with the enum in the second parameter. So in this case, we're going to be inserting my data dot body. And I already know that this exists. I've kind of checked. Uh, then we're going to say word dot uh, insert location dot. And then we're going to say end just because I want it to be at the bottom of the document. Okay. Now I know that, ah, sorry. And I forgot to do this. So we have to do a wait because it's promisified. Sorry about that. Okay. So we've got our promisified object resolved. Uh, into my data. So we should have our JSON object in there. Um, then we're going to be accessing my data itself. Uh, and we're going to be accessing the body property on that. We're going to be inserting it into the end of the document here. So you would think, okay, great, that's done. It works. Cool. We're going to save that. Um, it's compiling. Uh, and I just checked my compiler. This didn't auto import for some reason. Oops, I totally forgot. To, I totally forgot to export this as a default. Uh, export. So we say export default fetch data. Okay, so now we have our import and our export all fixed up. So you would assume that now we have fixed our import and export, we've resolved our uh, data call with the fetch API. 
uh, and we've called this, you would assume it just works, right? You would assume great, awesome, it's gonna work. All right, so let's switch over to Microsoft Word and actually see what happens. So we'll switch over to the Word API, sorry, we'll switch over to Microsoft Word and we'll click our button. And as you can see, nothing actually happens. No, no body of text gets inserted into our document. And you might be thinking like, well, why is that? Like, why did nothing get inserted into our document? Now, for those of you who have done uh, asynchronous programming for a long time, you might be starting to think to yourself, hmm, I wonder what happens if, uh, you know, these two different pieces of the application go out of sync. Because remember, this document here is still, I can still access it while my task pane is doing something, right? So that's kind of bad. That's kind of like, you know, hard to deal with. Fortunately, the Office JS API provides us with a mechanism specifically for solving that problem. So once we've actually done all of our document manipulation, whatever that is, right? So maybe changing the color of the text, it might be inserting paragraphs, it might be inserting images. Like it really just doesn't matter what it is. Whatever it is we've done, once we've actually finished with that, we have to synchronize our context and it's really easy to do. So we say context, context dot sync, right? <clears throat> and this is actually a promise as well. Um, and it returns a promise. So we actually have to await on that promise, right? So we want to resolve the promise itself, sync it up. Uh, and we're going to wait for our code to compile now. And it's now compiled. All right. So switching over to the uh, Microsoft Word application itself. Uh, as you can see now, we've added in that extra line, which resolves a uh, synchronization call uh, between the context and our Office JS add-in. So now if we go ahead and click this, as you can see here, uh, we fetched some data from an API and we're inserting it into here. And this is some broken lorem ipsum looking thing. Um, you can check out the API itself. But essentially that is what is involved in calling the context, uh, accessing the context, inserting some data, and then synchronizing the context. Um, so that is all for this video. I just kind of wanted to give you guys a brief introduction to the context itself. Um, in the next video, we're going to be taking a deeper dive into manipulating documents in Microsoft Word. Um, and then in the video after that, we're going to be looking at publishing our Office JS add-in. Um, and then in three more videos after that, we're going to be diving into Microsoft Excel, uh, where we're going to be manipulating a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Um, I really hope you enjoy this. I hope you found this was kind of informative. This is where we start getting into the nitty gritties of Office JS and you know how to work with Office JS. Um, so please do stay, please do stay tuned. Click that subscribe button. Click the bell notification. Click all of those things so I know that you guys are loving this series. Um, really keeps me motivated to keep going. And I will see you all very soon. Thank you for much. Thank you for watching.